He's, I think he's uh, supposedly in remission right now, which is... Okay, cool. Because you can't lose a dude, man. No way, man. No way, man. <laughs> All right, um, moving on. Candyman comes home and is now accessible on on demand for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. Oh, yeah. And then um, also into more horror news, we've got the final trailer for Halloween Kills. But although if you're not into... I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to probably stay away until I just watch the movie. Uh maybe don't watch it because i know studios are very um uh notorious for their the last trailer is always giving away too much and this it's is like, funny they, they they want you to go see the movie so bad that they'll ruin the movie for you in the trailer to get people to go which doesn't make sense but like you said uh you know they do it all the time yeah it's like a a formula which is insane to me but i think it's just how the at least movie culture has shifted where everyone wants to know exactly what they're getting um which is so weird it's strange to me um where's the surprise element you know (laughs) yeah i'm gonna i'm just gonna have to create that for myself and go in somewhat blind I suppose. You remember the good old days when you had to call the movie theater to listen to the like animatronic lady tell you what the show show times were? Yes, I used to do that all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I used to. Oh man, it was so cool. Kids nowadays will never know. Yeah, they have everything so easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got we got to uh, we got to uh, enjoy that. I guess you could say enjoy it um, for a little bit of our our childhood. Yeah. Right. Like the in-betweener, so we got to be there before, and then we get to see the the death of it. <laughs> Strange when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, um, wrapping up news, uh, this were, was it last week, we celebrated uh, Mexican Independence Day, which is awesome. And then oh, also, yeah. all week is um, he's, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, so... Shout out to all the uh, strong Latinos, Latinas out there. Oh, yeah. And then uh, that'll move us into our weekly recommendations, sir. What do you have for me? Um, I'm just going to go with what I just actually just watched. So that was um, the the Marvel's What If series. Uh, I, I just watched two of the last two episodes with Jordan. Um, definitely fun. I wish they were a little bit longer, but like I said, they're only about 30 minutes, around 30 minutes each. Um, pretty on par for, for what Disney's uh, pumping out in terms of uh, series uh, length for uh, our episodes. But uh, yeah, definitely check that out if you haven't. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's pretty cool to, to watch and just kind of enjoy and see uh, what if. Awesome. Is that your w- one and only? For this week? Uh, yes, my, my, my one and only, yeah. Very nice. Um, so I have two Hulu exclusives. My first one is uh, Dave. I'm not sure if you've heard about it yet. I have not, no. So it's basically, it's funny. It's this, um, he's, mm, he looks like he's in his either late 20s, early 30s. Uh, Dave, like this white kind of Jewish awkward kid, and he's trying to make it as a uh, as a rapper. Okay. But the the catch is, it's so funny. He like all like all of his music is kind of centered around him talking about how he has a small uh, dick. So he <laughs> so okay. his yeah his stage name is Lil Dicky, and uh, oh okay yeah so um, the show just kind of. Uh, follows him through his kind of journey with trying to like um, get studio time and and just become like a real artist and it's like surprisingly super entertaining and pretty like smartly written when you when you go into it you're not sure what it's going to be like or for it's you know what I mean like yeah something like that could be go bad really quick but they they do a really good job with it i i enjoyed it a lot so dave on hulu if you haven't already check it out 
one of the one his one of his main tracks is just like my dick sucks my dick sucks <laughs> i swear i'm not making oh this up i'm not making this up man when you watch it you'll understand it's hilarious and then um my second hulu exclusive is uh reservation dogs Oh, that's okay. I, I have seen the uh, trailers for that on on TikTok or, or Instagram or something. Yeah, it basically follows around uh, these Native American kids and um, kind of the inner workings of uh, being on Native land and, and what, you know, their day-to-day. It's pretty cool and uh, kind of enlightening. I, I really dig that show. It's fun. Are they, are they like on a reservation? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's the play, and it's oh, okay. uh, of course they're um, tipping their hats to uh, Reservoir Dogs. Obviously, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty yeah. rad. Um, yeah, so check those both out if you have some time, everyone. Nice. And then that'll finally move us into your uh, movie focus of the week, which oh, is yeah. which is freaky. Uh, available now on HBO Max. If you guys haven't seen this and you don't want it to be spoiled for you, here is your um, warning. Um, if you haven't and you are you hate spoilers, please put us on pause and come back after you watch the film on HBO Max. Uh, so, talking about Freaky this week, it's rated R. It's a horror comedy. It's from 2020. It runs at 1 hour and 42 minutes and it's got an 83 on Ryan. It was directed by nice. Chris Yeah, right, pretty high. It was directed by Christopher Landon, written by Michael Kennedy and also Christopher Landon, starring Catherine Newton, Vince Vaughn, Celeste O'Connor, Alan Ruck, and Katie uh Finneran. The freaky concept was first announced back in the summer of 2019 with Happy Death Day director Chris Landon helming the project. The original title of the film was supposed to be Freaky Friday the 13th, but a rights issue forced the production to cut down its title. The original title makes sense as the film is very much tongue-in-cheek throughout, paying homage to the uh, traditional 90s and 80s slasher formula while mixing a supernatural element that Landon has become known for within the last few years. Freaky is um, another film that had the disadvantage of being released within the height of the pandemic, but still managed to somewhat be profitable, making $16 million worldwide on a budget of just $6 million. The movie looks and feels the way most of the next-gen horror comedies under the Blumhouse banner do, clean and polished with a fun, young cast. But what makes the film really establish itself is the performance of one Vince Vaughn. No stranger to comedy, but we haven't really seen him as a real villain in quite a few years. Uh, Vaughn gets to let loose showcasing some really wicked and creative kills and then having to get inside the mind of a teenage girl when the swap emerges. Not to forget Catherine Newton who goes from an awkward nerd to a baddie with one fell swoop of a blade. Both of our main stars know what kind of film they are in and don't hold back with a hard R rating that really brings a sense of magic for genre fans. However, the story doesn't try to challenge us as viewers with little twists or surprises that you don't see coming. Overall, Freaky is the perfect gateway film for for people who aren't really well versed in the various different subgenres of horror and could be used as a great intro piece for those looking for a more lighthearted but still firmly adult ride. Thank you. Oh, very nice. I like that. So tell me, man, um, what made you want to pick this one? I don't know. Uh, something about the trailer when I first saw it, I, it came out, like you said, right around COVID. I uh, you know when everything was kind of um, hectic. But um, never got a chance to see it. I always wanted to see it, just never had the chance. And then uh, I saw maybe a couple of weeks ago that it popped up on HBO Max, which uh, surprised me because it's a universal property, correct? Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, so I was super excited for that uh, when it became available, and I just thought, you know, that'd be a perfect, uh, it'd be a fun one to do just because, you know, Vince Vaughn, I mean, the trailer, for at least for me, uh, 
uh, had me laughing a lot and um, I was curious to see what uh, you know how how it went and um, I actually didn't know that uh, I didn't really do any much research into it uh, going into the film uh, but I didn't know uh, Christopher Landon had actually uh, directed Happy Death Day and uh, my other one of my favorite movies uh, my new favorite movies um, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse he actually did that one as well yes yes he did so um, th- I think that's why I liked it because I love Happy Death Day about the, um, and I love I, I don't know if you did sorry to cut you off but I don't know if you no. knew but he also did the screen because he's more of a he's I think he's written more than he's directed and he wrote the screenplay for Disturbia oh my gosh see that's crazy I guess I like uh, I like this stuff <laughs> without, without even knowing I, I you know it's just, I'm, uh, he has a, a style I guess that I like I, like you were saying in, in your um, in your intro to the film uh, it is a very polished uh, film and and you definitely see that it's not too like grindhousey or anything like that um, I don't know it, it was it was really fun going into this uh, kind of I was actually going into a blind I'd never seen it and I'm assuming it was was it a first watch for you or have you seen it before I watched uh, because it was on on demand when it was uh, when it was in theater so obviously I Uh wasn't I wasn't going to the theaters but I yeah I watched it at home when it was um, when it was brand new so this was my second watch for the show okay yeah I I really like the approach to this um it's uh, I mean it's done it's been done before like with you know Freaky Friday with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and um, Lindsay Lohan and and, uh, number, and a couple of other movies I think kind of have the same premise but the, uh, uh, I think they're 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 more playing on that that version yeah um, yeah because it's Freaky Friday and then you know everything that goes down basically on Friday the Thirteenth uh, which I loved and I I loved the um, I don't know just the whole feel of it I think it was really cool the style of everything. Um, like you said, it's a great it's a great film for like uh, newbies or beginners of horror if they're not sure if they they want to go into it or kind of get their toes wet going into it. Uh, definitely is um, some of the kills in this are pretty um, visual. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. If you haven't seen it, be prepared. Um, I actually did like that. There was a couple scenes where I was like, "Oh crap!" because. Um, <laughs> the part where he's smashing the girl's head in with the uh, with the toilet uh, seat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" Um, I had to uh, I uh, I had to skip past the part where um, the boyfriend gets killed in the beginning. Oh, the bottle. Um, yeah, the bottle. No, no, not the bo- not the bottle part. Uh, right after that, um, when they're you know they're they're having sex. Oh yeah. I, that caught me off guard, and Jordan was right there watching it with me. So I had to say, I kind of s- skip like 30, 40 seconds past it. Um, but other than that, uh, he watched the rest, uh, pretty much the rest of it. But when, when that part was happening, I was like, oh my God. And then Alyssa was like, should Jordan be watching this? Um, it's funny because it's really, it's really fast because she's all like, oh, I already finished. And he's like, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, but yeah, I there I love how um, I don't know if you caught onto it, but there was like a part in the uh, in, in the early beginning when you know the the kid drops the the wine in the cellar and he's going down to pick it up and it they kind of avoided those those um, like scenes where you know he would pop back up and the killer would be right behind him. Yeah, they did it like three or, three or four times where it kind of. Like he he bends down to pick up the piece of the glass, puts it away, and then there's no one behind him. And he does it again, and he com- comes back up, and there's still no one behind him. And he do- does it about three or four times, and then finally, by the fourth time, then he's actually there and he gets killed. But it's like, oh wow, like they're doing like a, a, a quadruple fake on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was expecting it, and they they go for it, but I wasn't. Uh, it took them longer to get there, which I, I thought. Well, I I'm hoping that was intentional. Um, kind of making fun of the those kind of tropes and stuff that happen in horror movies, uh, but I thought that was really cool. Um, but what are your what are your thoughts on this? Did you did you like it the first time? Because this is like I said, this is the first time I've seen it, and I, I enjoyed it at least for the first time. Yeah, well, yeah, having it be, I really enjoyed it the first time. The second time, um, it's good. The only thing, 
I'll, I guess we'll, I'll, I'll just say what I thought it could have been um, done better with. It